folks. So this is the first of many videos going through some of the material from the STAT 220 textbook. And we're going to start with section 1.1, which is about the structure of data. So in this class, it's a statistics class, we're going to be doing a lot of work with data. So statistics is about collecting data and describing it. Um, we're gonna do lots of describing data that could be described as exploratory data analysis, um, which is graphics and summary statistics. Um, we're also gonna be doing a lot of analysis of data. Um, maybe we'll be doing more inferential statistics and we're going to be interpreting everything that we do. So a lot of statistics is about inference where we're going to draw a conclusion about some large population based only on data from a small sample. Um, and we have these two big questions in statistics that we're going to come back to again and again. So one big question is, is this number different than zero? And the other one is, what are some other reasonable values we could have observed? So those might seem kind of boring and basic, but they can be applied in many, many situations. To start with in this class, we're going to think about data. So data is a set of information about some set of observations. And in this class, we're going to be thinking about tidy data. So tidy data is data that can be drawn in a kind of rectangular shape. Um, if you think about a spreadsheet, that is often tidy data. So in tidy data, the rows in the data set are observations and the columns are variables. So this data set that I've got here um, is data about the Avengers. I got it from 538, which is an online uh, site that does a lot of data journalism. And so they have some data about the Avengers, which I don't know much about. But when we think about tidy data, we have cases and we have variables. So in this uh, example, the rows are the cases, and in this case, they are different people or different Avengers. So, uh, you know, we've got Thor and Steven Rogers and Wanda Maximoff. Again, I don't, I don't really know about these people, but uh, these are our observations. So there are things that we can observe. And observations could be people or trees or cells or US states or counties, things that we can, we can kind of look at and, and see in the world. And the columns are variables. Um, so variables are things that vary between the cases. So the number of appearances varies. Some of these Avengers have appeared many times. Uh, some have appeared not that many times. Uh, we've got this variable current, which I think means are they a current member of the universe, which could be true or false. Uh, we've got a variable year, which is the year that they were first introduced. Uh, this looks like I've sorted the data by year. So we've got the first people introduced in 1963, 64, 65, and it would go on. And so that year can vary. Um, we've got whether or not they're an honorary member of the Avengers and whether they've died. Um, and this data set actually goes on. It has, you know, some of these characters die more than once and they come back to life. So this is just, how, did they die the first time? Um, so many of these people have died at least once. Uh, here's another data set example, also from 538. This is about Bob Ross paintings. So Bob Ross is the guy who um, draws the happy little trees. And in this case, um, every row uh, is an episode of um, uh, the TV show. So we've got the season and all of these that I'm showing you here are season one, but the data goes on. And I've got episode one, two, three, four, five, and on and on. So the, the observations, the things we can observe, are the episodes. And then the variables, the things that change, are the title. So the title of the episode is different probably almost every time. And then we have variables like tree. Did the painting include a tree? And Bob Ross was known for his happy little trees, so most of these do. Uh, did it include clouds? Some of them included clouds. Uh, did it include a barn? Looks like none of these included a barn and you probably can't see my last variable But it's was the painting in a wood frame um, and apparently none of these were so um, So those are some things that can vary between the observations the, the episodes of the show 
So we've got our cases or our observations, we've got our columns, which are the variables. Um, and when we think about our variables, we can also categorize them as categorical or quantitative. Um, so if you have a categorical variable, it only has a few possible categories. So you could think about class year, uh, which probably only has a few possibilities. You could be a first year, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior. But there probably aren't a lot more choices than that, right? You could be a super senior, maybe you're a high school student who's taking a college class and you don't really have a class here. Um, so there's, there's some exceptions. We might have to condense down to just a set of categories, but it's not like there are infinite possibilities for your class here. Those are, are pretty limited. Um, and quantitative variables are variables that have numbers and lots of possibilities. So you could think of something like age, which could be, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, you could also think of, um, you know, a lot of times little kids are like, I'm five and a half. Um, and, and that's really important to them. Uh, so, so you could do that or, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, you know, she's 24 months. Uh, so you could, you could think about um, specifying uh, ages in, in very uh, minute detail with lots of possibilities. So sometimes quantitative variables are also called numeric variables. Um, sometimes categorical variables could be called qualitative variables. Uh, so um, there's, there's some different words, but, but those are the two main types of variables. So here's another example of some data. Um, I'd encourage you to uh, pause the video and try and think about um, which of these variables you think are categorical and which you think are quantitative. Um, the one that you probably can't see here is the number of siblings that someone has. So let's, let's make some guesses about which ones are categorical and which ones are quantitative. So categorical, let's do in green. Definitely major, I think, is going to be categorical. There's only a limited number of categories. We've got this variable, high school, which is whether they got a high school diploma, a GED, or maybe they didn't uh, finish um, something like that. So it just might say NA, or maybe we've got some missing data there. Uh, and then we've got some uh, quantitative, quantitative, and I'll do that in blue. Uh, I think the number of children is probably quantitative, and the age of someone, and the number of siblings that someone has. The ID, that's a little bit harder to say, but it looks like it's probably quantitative. Um, that's just like the, the identifier for the person, so maybe that is also quantitative. And you could think about the same thing for this Bob Ross data, which ones are categorical and which ones are quantitative. Maybe we'll talk about that during synchronous class. Then what we often want to do in statistics is answer some questions with data. So here are some questions that we might be able to answer with data. Is the number of paintings with trees uh, different based on the season of The Joy of Painting? That's the Bob Ross TV show. Or which major has the largest number of siblings on average? Or are there more dead honorary Avengers or dead full Avengers? Um, so those are just a few questions that we could answer with these data sets. Um, and so what I'd like you to do is for each of those questions, think about what the variables are and if those variables are categorical or quantitative. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to start with the question at the bottom. So are there more dead honorary Avengers or full Avengers? So I think the two variables here are dead, uh, yes or no, and uh, I don't know, status, which is honorary or full. Um, and because those just have a couple possibilities, I think those are both categorical. So we could think about maybe percentages as a way to compare those groups.
Now we've got the question, which major has the largest number of siblings on average? And again, we've got two uh, variables. We've got major, which could be like English or math or business, right? Uh, and then we've got siblings, and that could be zero, one, two, like that. So I think major is categorical and siblings is quantitative. And then the last one that I wanna think about is the number of paintings with trees in them and the season of the joy of painting. So we've got trees. And I think if you remember when we looked at that data, it either had a zero or a one. And then we have the season, which is one, two, three. I don't know how many seasons there were, but there were a few of them. Um, and so this is a question where I think I would accept either answer here. So um, even though these things kind of look numeric, they're numbers zero or one, or one, two, three, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, those numbers make them look quantitative, but I kind of think that we might consider them to be categorical, at least season. Um, so we might consider this to be categorical uh, so that we can compare season one to season two, sort of like different categories. Um, uh, Cause I don't think that we would want to consider like the mean of season one. Uh, we might want to consider the mean of trees. So maybe, maybe this one is uh, numeric or quantitative but it could also be categorical. So it's this or that, and then this one is categorical or numeric. I think you could think about it either way. Um, and that's one of the things with statistics is many questions, the answer is it depends. Sometimes there's a better answer and a worse answer, but there isn't always a completely right answer. So the last thing that we wanna think about um, when it comes to variables is the idea of explanatory variables and response variables. So an explanatory variable is one that might explain what's happening, and a response variable is one that might respond to the other variable. So it looks like my bullet points got a little messed up here, but is the number of appearances an Avenger has related to the year they were introduced or are people with high school diplomas on average older or younger than people with GEDs? So think for a second about those variables and whether uh, one is explanatory or response. Uh, for number one, about the appearances an Avenger has, um, is it related to the year they were introduced? So I think the response and I usually think about the response first. That's easier for me. That's the thing that we're interested in. The response is the appearances. We think that might respond. And the explanatory is the year. We think the year in which they were introduced might explain the number of appearances. Maybe uh, older. the older the year is, the more appearances that they have. And then number two, uh, we have our response and explanatory. Again, I usually think about the response, um, the thing that uh, might be responding, and then think about what might explain it. So in this case, I think the response is age, and the explanatory is um, high school diploma or GED. We think that that might explain some difference in age. All right, so let's think about those same three questions uh, and try and think which variable is explanatory and which variable is response. And we'll talk about that during our synchronous class session.